Welcome to part two of Inside the JB Ford. In this segment we're going to go deep inside the old boat. Be sure to use the handrails. You are here. This blueprint of a JB Ford class lake boat will help show you what you're looking at. Here we're going into the captain's cabin. We first pass through the screen door which was handy in black fly season. The entire cabin is lined with wonderful woodwork. It's oak. Often captain's quarters were oak paneled. Walking inside we turn and look behind us. Here's the ship's interphone. This is the attention getter. My guess is it works both ways. Here we see the skipper's bedroom. Note the external wiring. This beautiful woodwork is handmade and most may be 1903 original. When the boat does go to scrap, none of this will likely survive. The scrappers are only interested in steel. The rest will be burned. Of course, every true lake boat nut is going to ask, what's in here? The original pilot house? Is it the captain's lounge? Or guest quarters? Or is it still a pilot house? What's in there? Let's go find out. It houses the boat's gyro compass. First introduced on the lakes aboard the Wilson Transit Company boats in 1924. The problem was where to install them. The things were huge. In many boats, either the captain or the mate lost a room in order to house the device. This one took over what was probably once the captain's office. Here it looks like it could still run. By 1937, the Pittsburgh Steamship Company boasted that its entire fleet was gyro compass equipped. This class of lake boat had what was called a half-raised forecastle. The term forecastle is mariner's slang for forecastle. It means the forward end of a sailing ship where the crew was housed. Half-raised forecastles were a fad in the lakes from about 1898 to about 1907. It was thought that this arrangement would give better clearance to the unloading equipment ashore. As it turned out, there was little benefit as the unloaders on shore had evolved to better meet the needs of the boats. Also, it squeezed everything, especially the guest quarters, into the bow. So now we have to go down into the half deck to enter the forecastle. Here we go. You are here. This deck plan of the JV Ford will be your guide. The most stunning thing that I saw on the JV Ford was this 1903 original banister. I wanted to take it home and put it in my new house. My wife said it was a good thing that I didn't. Lots of screen doors for black fly protection. Our first stop is what once was one of the guest staterooms. This one has the forward mast running through it. Over on the port side is the mate's room. This is one of the recessed portholes. Here we see the watchman's room. Odds are that the chandelier belongs somewhere else. This woodwork was originally pine with a natural finish. Today it's been painted countless times. Here we see a modern sink and an ancient bar of soap in the cabinet. Now let's visit, perhaps, the second most important place on the bow. Welcome to the windlass room. A windlass is an old English term given to a device used to haul up anchors, and it is now used to describe winches as well as anchor lifting devices. Here we see the Ford's anchor chains going down into the hawse pipes. When the boat is loaded, the hawse pipes are very close to the water. 
and that's in calm weather. In waves, they are often under the water. Yet the pipes must be kept open in case the anchors need to be dropped in a hurry. One solution to keeping the water out is to stuff old pillows into the pipes. If you have to drop the anchors in a hurry, the pillows can just go with them. Meanwhile, you can keep the deck fairly dry. There are other hawse openings in the windlass room, like this one. They have covers. Here we see one dog down. And here I've heard this called a cat hole. I'm not really sure that that's correct. Of course, if you have steel cables coming aboard, you need something strong to fasten them to. You just can't say to the guy standing next to you, here, hold this. That's why these bullards come in handy. As does this capstan. Here's a fun one. Notice the anchor chain. These are the devil's claws. They are used to keep the anchor from accidentally being dropped. When the boat is in a river or a port, the devil's claws are released before entering. That way the anchor can be quickly dropped. This was often the most important part of the windlass room. Directly below the windlass room is the anchor chain locker. That is a lot of chain, folks. Of course, just exploring this far isn't good enough. We gotta go farther down. Oh yeah. Steps end up on the top of the bow thruster. There isn't even a deck here, folks. Only a platform. On the starboard side, we see the original 1903 riveting. On the port side, it is clearly different. Probably work that was done when they converted this side to a recessed anchor. Watch for part three as we go aft. <laughs> 